In the opening scene, we are introduced to a man named Armin, who is conducting interviews with high-ranking officials. Armin's lack of experience becomes evident as he struggles to handle the camera and properly focus on his subjects. Once he is done, Armin reports his work to his superior, only to realize that the camera had not been in recording mode the entire time. This infuriates the boss, causing him to storm out of the room. Following this, we are introduced to our protagonist properly. Armin is an aimless bachelor who is struggling financially and lives alone in a small apartment. He displays a lack of understanding when it comes to women, as demonstrated when he invites a girl named Rosa to his place in an attempt to create a romantic atmosphere. He plays pre-coital music. <laughs> what, like Coldplay? However, when Rosa requests to use his toothbrush, Armin refuses and instead offers her a new one. It's what I would have done. But this action upsets Rosa, leading her to leave without saying anything. In the next scene, Armin visits his parents' house in order to see his grandmother, who is bedridden. Armin's personal life is dysfunctional because his father has abandoned his mother, and he is now with his younger lover named Lilo. Stitch is gonna beat his ass. That night, Armin stays with his grandmother, rests his head on her shoulder, and provides her with comfort assuring her that everything will be okay. The next evening, Armin decides to visit his biological mother, even though his father does not want him to. He believes that his mother is waiting for him. After a long drive, he arrives at his mother's place, only to discover that she is having a good time with her friends. The sight leaves him feeling rejected, and he quietly departs with tears in his eyes. He then drives to a river coast, where he sees people joyfully enjoying a cruise party, which intensifies his feelings of loneliness. The following morning, Armin wakes up in his car and decides to go to the nearby grocery store to purchase some food. Upon entering, he realizes that the store is deserted. He looks around and calls out for the cashier, but no one is there to respond to him. As a result, he grabs some items and leaves money on the cashier's table as a generous gesture. Exiting the grocery store, he notices a few motorbikes and cars with their engines still running at the gas station. However, he does not pay much attention and drives away. Gradually, Armin starts feeling a sense of unease due to the completely empty roads. Shortly after, he comes across several abandoned and scooters in the middle of the road, feeling an eerie sensation. He tries to contact his father, but fails to reach him. Panic sets in, so he rushes back to his father's place. Upon arrival, he finds the door locked from the inside, prompting him to knock. Worry builds as there is no response, and this leads him to forcefully break the entrance door. Inside, he only discovers the lifeless body of his grandmother, lying on the bed. This freaks him out, and he starts screaming for help. But once again, no one responds. Left with no choice, he enters the house of a neighbor named Lothar, but only finds the family dog, Cosmo. Unable to comprehend what is happening, Armin returns home and ponders to himself. His confusion heightens when he realizes that his phone has no network signal, and the water taps have run dry. Before long, he hears a noise coming from the entrance door. Upon checking on it, he discovers Cosmo, who is injured and in its final moments. Believing that someone is responsible for all of this, Armin grabs a rifle and heads to Lothar's house to confront the presumed intruder. However, his assumption proves to be wrong, as he finds no one there. The next morning, Armin improvises a shower using a bottle of water and proceeds to carry out his grandmother's final ritual. For this, he collects all the books, copies, and papers, places them beneath his grandmother's bed, douses them in gasoline, and sets them ablaze with a lighter. After this, he heads out on a drive along an empty rural road, encountering numerous abandoned vehicles along the way. Soon after, he comes across an upscale police sports car. Armin, who has never ridden any luxurious cars in his life, immediately gets inside the car and thoroughly enjoys the ride in it. After a while, he enters a tunnel, where he discovers an overturned truck housing trapped horses. Feeling bad for them, he immediately frees the animals from their confinement. <laughs> the scene then cuts to a few years later, and we see that Armin is living his life like a farmer. He has constructed a wooden dwelling somewhere in the woods of the desolated world, where he rears various birds and animals, such as chickens, ducks, horses, and goats. It becomes evident that he is adapted to solitary living, as he sews clothes on his own, searches for food, and cares for his animal companions. Apart from all this, he even works on his new invention to generate electricity with the help of water from the nearby river. One night, while sleeping, Armin is awakened by the sounds of a restless goat. Hey, I can't sleep! Upon checking on it, he discovers that the goat is in the midst of giving birth. Armin witnesses the entire birthing process and experiences a profound sense of joy. However, his happiness is short-lived as the baby goat is snatched away by a jackal the very next morning. Feeling bad for the mother goat, Armin chases after the jackal with his gun, but his efforts prove fruitless. Disheartened, he returns empty-handed and sits with the mother goat for a while. 
contemplating the loss. One particular day, Armin rides on his horse and ventures into the woods to scavenge for necessary goods. As he enters deep into the woods, he, along with his horse, is suddenly attacked by a wild dog. Reacting swiftly, Armin shoots the dog, but in the process, he falls from his horse and sustains a head injury, causing him to lose consciousness. After a while, we see someone arriving at the scene with a flashlight and observing the injured Armin. In the morning, Armin regains consciousness, only to find himself wrapped in aluminum foil, keeping him warm. He has no idea how he ended up like this. He thinks for a while and then makes his way back to his dwelling. Later in the evening, Armin notices a station wagon approaching his place. Suspicious that it may be a potential threat, he grabs a rod as his weapon and hides himself behind a bush. Soon after, a woman named Kiersey approaches him wielding a shotgun, demanding he relinquish his weapon. The latter is too scared to attack, so he complies and throws the rod aside. Kiersey also lowers her firearm and walks back to her vehicle. The next morning, Armin wakes up and discovers a breakfast beside him. As he tastes the food, he finds it remarkably delicious, as it has been a long time since he last enjoyed such a meal. A few moments later, Kiersey walks in and notices a wound on his leg. Recognizing its severity, she retrieves first aid supplies from her vehicle and tends to his injury. Later, as they sit down for a cup of coffee, Kiersey inquires why Armin chose to reside in this remote location instead of an urban area. In response, he explains that this place holds a sense of belonging for him. He then asks if Kiersey has encountered any other humans to which she replies that he is the first one. As their conversation continues, Armin reaches out and touches her hand, relishing the sensation of human contact after a long time. Delighted to have found each other, they then share a passionate kiss and eventually become intimate. From that day forward, they establish a life together as a couple, residing in Armin's self-built home. In the next scene, we see Kiersey and Armin toiling in the field, engrossed in their work. Amidst their labor, Kiersey opens up about her harrowing experience in Syria. She recounts how she found herself stranded in the vast Syrian desert when her vehicle broke down, enduring three agonizing days without a single drop of water. In addition, Kiersey confides her desire to visit Berlin, but Armin dismisses the city, considering it boring and unappealing, whereas Armin is a god goddamn party animal. Apart from their daily activities, Armin also devotes his time and energy to his latest invention, harnessing the power of river water to generate electricity. Despite encountering numerous setbacks and failures, he perseveres and eventually achieves success, producing an adequate power supply for their home. As the days pass, the couple appears to be living a happy life together. They work hard in the fields, share meals, and relish moments of leisure, such as swimming in the nearby river. However, their happy life begins to suffer when Armin expresses his desire to have a child. Kiersey vehemently opposes the idea, saying that she doesn't want to bring a child into this apocalyptic world. When Armin continues persisting, she becomes angry and abruptly departs, leaving him alone once again. Armin just wants to give the baby to the goat. The following evening, as Armin sits down to have his meal, his attention is drawn to a recreational vehicle that arrives near his dwelling. Intrigued, he ventures outside to investigate, only to find Kiersey in the vehicle with a dog. As the two chat, Kiersey reveals fragments of her past life. She discloses that she had been deeply in love with the man for seven years and was looking forward to starting a family with him. However, he continuously urged her to wait, leaving her in a state of uncertainty. Then, one fateful day, his son unexpectedly unexpectedly arrived at their doorstep. Kiersey says that she had spent seven years of her life with a man without truly knowing him, resulting in a heartbreak that forever changed her perspective. This experience seems to have transformed her into a resilient and independent individual. Additionally, Kiersey expresses her desire to travel to the south with Armin. However, he politely declines, saying he cannot leave his beloved animals behind. Later, the pair drives to the nearby grocery store, looking to get some beverages. Armin is happy at Kiersey's return, so he turns on some music and begins dancing with her. After enjoying the moment for a while, the two of them make their way back home, with Armin looking joyful, but Kiersey seeming sad. Something is clearly bothering her. On their way, a tire on their RV suddenly punctures. Seeing this, Kiersey asks Armin to repair the tire by the following morning, revealing her intention to leave. This makes Armin sad, and he inquires if she will return. Kiersey simply says, don't wait for me. As night falls, she goes to bed, but Armin is restless. He just stands before her and keeps staring at her beautiful face. In the morning, Kiersey awakens and prepares a cup of coffee for herself. Just then, she finds Armin's recipe book, which grabs her attention. Going through its pages, she stumbles upon a photograph of Armin alongside his grandmother, which makes her smile. In a final twist, it is revealed that it's actually her grandmother too, and she is Armin's sister. Gotcha. <laughs> 
At the same time, Armin brings her RV back after successfully solving the tire issue. Handing her the vehicle keys, he cautions her not to exceed a speed of 80, as the tires might experience instability. Shortly after, Armin and Kiersey share a kiss one last time, and she expresses her gratitude to him for fixing her tires and allowing her to leave. As she prepares to drive away, Armin stops her. Not wanting to be alone again, he makes an impulsive decision to go along with her. He asks for her to just wait a minute so that he can free all of his animals. With this request, he starts opening opening all the cages and sets the animals loose. But as he does this, Kiersey suddenly drives away, leaving him behind. Holy crap, that, twi that twist wasn't a joke. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.